Harry's Game by Andy Hamilton, starring James Grout as the Professor, Jimmy Mulville as Thomas, Robert Duncan as Scumspawn, and Andy Hamilton as Satan. Ta -ta -da -da -da. Panic, it's only me, Satan, Prince of Darkness, an all round tasty geezer in it, respect. Hey, bro. <laughs> hey, bro. You fancy a quick trip up to the land of the living? I want to show you this brilliant new bit of diabolical mischief I've come up with. It's a new self help book that I've written and published. It's called You Are Special, Everyone Else Is a Git. <laughs> <laughs> I've sneaked it into all the bookshops and it's selling like Viagra at the Derby and Joan Club, I'm telling you. <laughs> the global selfishness index has soared to an all time high. What, 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 what's Thomas doing? Well, he's doing a bit of writing of his own, actually. <coughs> He's writing. Yes, creative writing. He's trying to write a poem. This is hell, not evening classes. <laughs> the damned aren't allowed to do creative writing or creative anything. You are here to experience infinite suffering. That excludes hobbies of any kind, with the possible exception of golf. <laughs> As that is a form of infinite suffering. And, and where did you get the pens and all these notepads? Where did you get them? Well. Uh, well, he, uh, well, um, we, well we, we, we'd we, rather we, not say. That's right, yeah. Oh, oh, you'd rather not, eh? Then presumably you'd rather I filled your sinuses with fire ants. And then, oh, I get it. Scumspawn! Did you call my prince speaking of my existence and reason for my being? Shut it. Uh, consider it shut, my liege. Now, think, think carefully, Scumspawn. Did you, by any chance, furnish the Professor and Thomas here with pen and paper? Uh, yes, I, I provided them with writing materials. Ah, but that was my fault, you see. I... I felt that writing would be good for us, especially Thomas. So I asked Scumspawn Well, Scum why would writing he... be good for you? Well, you know, a sort of cathartic therapy. You see, I've always rather envied writers. I think the act of writing must give them a tremendous amount of peace and solace. You've not met many writers, have you? <laughs> well, no, no. Yeah, well, I have. And do you know what writers are? Writers are miserable, grudging drunks who just happen to know a lot of words. They're not seeking solace. No, no. As far as they're concerned, writing's an act of revenge. Revenge against who? Everybody. <laughs> Everyone who isn't them and who fails to realise what a genius they are. If they weren't writers, they'd all be serial killers. I'm sorry if my supplying stationery angered you, my lord. Well, I would have been angry, Scumspawn, if it wasn't for the fact that the professor here is completely wasting his time, as Thomas has got about as much poetry in him as Anne Whittacombe's left buttock. <laughs> I resent that. Well, have you written anything yet, Thomas? No. I'll try to sort of let my subconscious roam in an imaginative way, but then I just, I just end up screaming obscenities. Mostly about Alan Titchmarsh for some reason. <laughs> well, well, it's early days yet. I mean, we've got loads of time, we've got all of time. And I've been reciting chunks of my favourite poems to try and inspire him. Mm. You know, Wordsworth, Dunn. Yeah. Yeah. And my own favourite, W.B. Yeats. Yeah, fascinating. And but... what rough beast, his hour come round at last. Slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. That's you, that is. <laughs> what? Well, you're the rough beast slouching towards Bethlehem to be born. Says who? Well, it's obviously meant to be you. The poem's called The Second Coming, and what other rough beast could be slouching towards Bethlehem? Well, it could be a camel. <laughs> Camels lollop, they don't slouch. <laughs> well, perhaps it's a teenage camel, I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, I don't slouch, right? My posture is extremely good, considering I have to bear the weight of these sudden great horns. It's only willpower that stops my legs from snapping. Well, I don't know why you're getting so worked up. It's only a poem. It's gibberish. And another thing, how can I be slouching towards Bethlehem if I haven't been bloody born yet, eh? Answer me that. It doesn't make sense. Well, I suppose that's what's called ambiguity. No, 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 no. Poets call it ambiguity. In the real world, that's called sloppiness. So you're not keen on poets, then? No, well, they've been getting away with it for too long, haven't they? And writers, all these storytellers who just make things up because they feel like it. You know, when Dante arrived down here, the first thing I did was I said, Dante, I said, take a look around. Do you see any circles? No, he said, good. I said, now get inside that keg of dog vomit. <laughs> yes, but surely the circles were just Dante's allegory for man's spiritual struggle. You do know what an allegory is, I take it? Yes. Yes, I do. An allegory is what you resort to when you can't be bothered to find out the facts. <laughs> it's not just Dante. I'm always being inaccurately represented, traduced, defamed. It's happening even as we speak. Come on, come on, I'll show you. It's a film set. 
yeah, 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 yeah. And over there, look who's playing me, Satan, Lord of the Underworld. Just look, look. It's a girl. It's not a girl, you old fool. It's Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, the lighting's not very... Did uh... you see him in Titanic? No, I died before that film came out. Oh, then you were one of the lucky ones. <laughs> Is that me? Look at him, I ask you. A podgy pretty boy who looks like a prepubescent Norman Lamont. I mean, <laughs> mind, mind you, he's, he's just the latest in a litany of total miscastings. I've been portrayed by Brad Pitt, Jim Carrey, Ian McShane. Ian McShane, I've been played by Lovejoy. <laughs> Mephistopheles with a mullet, honestly. <laughs> Then there was Al Pacino, Liz Hurley, and Estee Lauder Girl. That's an insult, yeah. I mean, I didn't mind Jack Nicholson, because he's my kind of guy. And, and he's got my eyebrows. <laughs> Still, looks like they're going to have to abandon shooting in a second. Why? Well, I think Leonardo's going to have to take a little break, because, uh, well, because I just feel his wife runs with puff adders. Oh, my God! <laughs> You're back, my master. I, I missed you so much. Yeah, yeah, shut it. You see, Prof, the trouble with being Satan is that you're always being demonised. You know, especially by, especially by the media. Oh, tell me about it. When I was alive, they made this revealing documentary about me. It was scandalous, full of misrepresentation and exaggeration. For a start, they made the murder thing sound a lot worse than it actually was. <laughs> they made a murder sound worse than it was? Yes. They didn't put it into context. And the context was? He had it coming. <laughs> and it was a crime of passion, obviously. Why, did you catch him with your wife or something? No. He was a Jehovah's Witness, and I was trying to watch the football. <laughs> you murdered a Jehovah's Witness? Yes, it's not something I'm proud of. I accept I was probably in the wrong. And if I had my time again, I wouldn't fit my neighbour up like that. But we can all be clever with hindsight, can't we? <laughs> See, Prof, writing poetry is not going to help a degenerate like him. In fact, poetry is a pointless pursuit, full stop. Why do you feel so threatened by the idea of poetry? Oh, it takes more than the poem to scare me, mate. I don't... There's something that makes you feel uncomfortable. Something about the ambiguities. Listen, words should mean what they mean. That's what words are for. Once words start meaning more than one thing, it's not a language, it's a lottery. But what is it that bothers you so about the idea that you can't absolutely pin down the meaning of something? Well, you started it with that stupid WBH gibberish about the, the, the prenatal sloucher on his way to Bethlehem. I mean, what is he on about? Well, I suppose that has to remain a mystery. No, it doesn't. Come on. Where are we going? To find WB Yates. And another thing, those initials are so pretentious. WB. Why can't he just be Bill Yates? Hmm? Poets just have to have initials, don't they? A.E. Houseman, E.E. E. Cummings. That poser could even be bothered with capital letters. Or rhymes. Come on. Gosh, he's really in a tiz about this poetry biz. Oh! You are a poet and you do not know it. <laughs> <laughs> when I feel a little witty, I spout a jolly ditty. <laughs> <laughs> That's, very good. That's very good. Yeah. You're obviously a bit of a bard. Uh, you know, Satan forgot to confiscate the pen and paper. I know. Um, do you think you could help me with my poem therapy as a friend? As a. Yes? Yeah? As a fr As a fun thing. <laughs> So, where will we find this uh, W.B. Yeats, then? Oh, he'll be in Poet's Corner, which is uh, just the other side of this section. And what's this section? Uh, the writer's block. <laughs> <laughs> you mean these poor souls are all writers? Yeah, surely you work that out from the clouds of dandruff. <laughs> My goodness. So, do most writers end up in hell? All writers end up in hell. Because <laughs> they not only live bad lives, they imagine bad lives. You can't get more depraved than that. So they have to be punished. And this is their punishment block, where all writers are tormented by their own creations. Oh, my God. Yeah. Over there, you can see Charles Dickens being eternally beaten up by Bill Sykes <laughs> and a horde of lisping orphan cripples. <laughs> whilst receiving groundless reassurance from Mr Micawber. Fear not, young sir, you're just waiting for something to turn up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and down there is Flaubert, chained to a Madame Bovary, who just keeps wittering on about how dull provincial life is. Uh, oh, and to the right, you can see the great Ernest Hemingway, trapped in an eternal bullfight. Uh, well, fight is possibly not quite the right word. But that bull must be 30 feet high. What's that in Hemingway's hand? A uh, cocktail stick. Yeah. <laughs> ah! 
And you mean that just keeps happening to him over and over? I mean, that is horrendous. Yeah, although I always get this funny feeling that Hemingway quite enjoys the challenge, you know. <laughs> now, to our left there, you can just make out the feet of J.M. Barry disappearing into that ticking crocodile. Over there, besieged by an army of bullying ants, is P.G. Woodhouse. And over there, well, you probably don't want to see what Mellors the Gardener's doing to D.H. Lawrence. <laughs> Oh, my God, was that him? No, 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 that was two screams. No, that's the Brothers Grimm being pursued by a psychotic witch made out of gingerbread. Oh, <laughs> this is vile. Oh, thanks very much, yeah. <laughs> my demons love playing the parts of all these fictional creations, though they do tend to fight over whose turn it is to be Moriarty and chase Arthur Conan Doyle with the massive painted dog. <laughs> Oi, I know you, you poxy great pinnock. You remember Jane Austen, Professor? <laughs> Yes, I do. Uh, you've introduced me to her before. Yeah, Jane Austen's torment is to be surrounded by silly relatives and unreliable army captains. But the demons taking on the guises end up with a lot of bite marks. Mm. <laughs> yeah, she does seem rather aggressive. Do you want some? Leave it, Jane, leave it. <laughs> it's a drink, I think. Let's see who else have we got. Uh, oh, yeah, there, Lewis Carroll in a new wonderland where he's being persecuted by the Mad Hatter, a March Hare and a panicky white rabbi. <laughs> which I suspect may be an administrative error. I'm late! Oi vey, but I'm late! Yeah. Uh, and, um... Oh, and, and this is no coward. Oh, stop it, dear boy. You're so terribly, terribly frightening. Yeah. And, and he's being confronted by Godzilla. But no coward didn't write Godzilla. I know, I got bored. <laughs> Promising QCs in the country, you're terribly shy with women. You were editor of the Express, if I remember correctly. Yes, one of seven in the last eight years. Oh, why are they talking like that? Oh, these demons are portraying characters from a Geoffrey Archer novel. <laughs> I'd be curious about why I place such importance on this scrap of useless paper. Mind, it's not easy. You will be with no commas and all those subordinate clauses, Archer one writes, one they tend to hyperventilate and, and black out. Risk international <laughs> embarrassment should you fail to. Uh... Like that. And are they here ready to torment Archer when he arrives? No, no, they're to torture the writers already here. <laughs> yeah, I torment them with Archer's dialogue uh, and his sales figures. <laughs> anyway, I don't want Archer coming down here, lowering the tone, barking out tall tales about how he was the youngest viceroy of India ever to win Olympic gold in the 200 metres hurdles while simultaneously splitting the atom. <laughs> Yes, he does live in his own strange world of fantasy. Yeah, trouble is he tries to make the rest of us live there with him. <laughs> now, come along, Prof, you dawdling. Come on. Well, how much further is it to this poet's corner? Oh, not that far now. If you listen carefully, you can just hear the sound of Wordsworth being savaged by a thousand carnivorous daffodils. <laughs> Just, um, just run that past me again. Well, the professor's theory is that if I wrote poetry, it might help me find solace, help me exercise the demons inside me. I mean, they're not real demons, obviously, I'm talking figuratively. Right. Though you have had real demons inside you. Yes, yes, yes. I, I'd, I'd rather not be reminded of that if it's all the same to you. It's all, it was all rather harrowing. Uh, uh, that was Satan at his most cruel, I'd say. Apart, possibly, from that time he made you strip naked yes. and then fry that very fatty bacon. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I'd, I'd rather not be reminded of that either, thank you. So, um, have you written anything so far? Well, I've managed one effort, but I don't think it's any good. Oh, come on, I'm sure No, it is. no, 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 it's... No, no, let's hear it, no, come no, on. No, 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 I can't. Oh, please, no, I'm sorry, it. I can't. All right, fair enough. Oh, very well, look, you twisted my arm. <laughs> it goes like this. My poem. Hate, 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 hate. Hate, 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 hate. Hate, 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 Alan Tishmosh. Well, uh, yes, it's uh, certainly got a lot of energy. Energy, yes, yes. Uh, and yes. it's got a certain um, <coughs> unity oh, to it. Oh, unity, yes, good, yes, good, yeah. yes, uh, yes, and, yes. And rhythmically, it's, yes. uh, it's, 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 it's dynamic. Dyna well, I went for dynamic, yes. yes. Well, dynamic, I had yes. a sort of uh, well, a primal urgency, yeah, urgency primitive, 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 almost, yes, and yes. that yes. reminded one of a sort of unfettered pagan, pagan. tribal yes. drumbeat. Yes. yes, you're saying it's crap, aren't you? Well, yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, it's interesting crap. I mean, why this obsession with Alan Titchman? I don't know! 
I give free reign to my subconscious, and that's what popped out. Perhaps subliminally, I hate Titchmarsh because somehow I feel he's all that stands between me and Charlie Dimmock. I don't know. <laughs> but that's the best I could come up with, and it's pathetic. Well, but perhaps if you could sort of relax, then your mind might free up the images that well, well, don't involve hating TV gardeners. Oh, you make it sound so easy. <laughs> but I can't relax. I spent my whole life unrelaxed, not knowing how to relax, not daring to try, because if I relaxed, then I, I'd drop my guard. And then they'd get me. Who's they? Oh, the great predatory they, out there, lurking in the long grass. Uh, oh, of course, yes. Yeah, yeah, they've always hated me, you see. Do you know how many people attended my funeral? Three. My brother, my wife, and a man from the fraud squad. <laughs> Not exactly mass mourning, was it? Well, I bet people were upset. Though. Well, my wife was upset by the low turnout, yes. Well, there you are. She said it wasn't enough people to do a Mexican wave. <laughs> my brother cried, though. Isn't that odd? Well, I'm not really. You'd have cried at his funeral, wouldn't you? Afraid not. He can write poems, my brother. <laughs> he was always the jammy one. Anyway, how come you know what happened at your funeral? Uh, oh, Satan videoed it for me. Oh, I'm giving up this poetry, cobblers. I'm beyond help. I'm a freak. Oh, no, 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 don't give up. Let's have another try, eh? Look, <sighs> never give up. Yeah, no, I really appreciate your support, Scumson. I really do, but... But could you take your claw off my shoulder? It's drawing blood. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we reach Poet's Corner yet? Yeah, this is it. Can't you tell? The screaming's got much more effeminate. <laughs> now, I'm just looking for your WB Yates code. Oh, good grief. A tiger. Yeah, yeah. He's quick, that William Blake, isn't he? <laughs> and what are those demons doing? Looks like some kind of party game. Yeah, they're playing Blind Man's Buff with John Milton. In, in the buff. <laughs> Serves him right. He made a fortune out of me with his Paradise series. Paradise lost, Paradise regained, Paradise fell down the back of the sofa. And... Oh, but what poetry, eh? Miltonic verse has got such music to it. Wasn't it him who wrote, They also serve who only stand and wait? Well, that's not true in shoe shops. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Found him, WB Yates. He's being tormented over there, see? Oh, which one is he? Uh, the bearded one with his mouth taped shut. Well, that's not much of a torment. It is if you're Irish. <laughs> now, <laughs> now then, I'll just, uh, I'll just take it off. Ooh, ah! ooh, look at the hairs on that. Now then, Bill, <laughs> this is the professor. And we'd like you to put us straight about a line from one of your little limericks that's been bothering us. It's the one that goes, and what rough beast, it's our come round at last, slouches towards Bethlehem to be born. Ah, yes. Well, that's about you, that is. Uh, see? <laughs> yes, yes, OK, so it's a reference to me, fine, but, but what precisely were you trying to say? Well, I suppose I was just expressing my fears about the future of my beloved Ireland. OK, OK, so in that case, why didn't you just write, I'm very worried about Ireland? That's all it needed. Why, why bother with the Ponzi tosh, OK? And another thing, you've got me slouching towards Bethlehem to be born, but if I haven't been born yet, how can I already be slouching? Yes, that does look like a contradiction, doesn't it? So why did you write it? I've no idea. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it just came out like that. You see, Prof, they're all drivel mongers. You see, when you're writing poetry, you often draw on imagery and language that seems to stem not from any rational mm. process, but from some uncharted territory yeah. that lies somewhere between yeah. the maelstrom of the emotions and the controlling yeah. tyranny of the mind. Yes, yes, I know. Oh. Similarly, of yeah. course, the reader responds in a highly individual, individual way yes. that is a complex dance of subjective interpretations, all personal and intense, and all sheltered beneath the shimmering cloak of ambiguity. Does that clear it up for you? <laughs> um, you seem to have boiling tar coming out of your nose there. <laughs> You'll be wanting a hanky, I reckon. I'm Satan. I do not carry a hanky. I'm afraid it gets a bit cross when people talk about ambiguity. Well, I've always felt that ambiguity is like some secret music that only your soul can hear. Oh, look, the tar's coming out of your ears as well now. <laughs> and your eyes are glowing orange. Sure, there's a strange, terrible beauty about it. Yes, actually, if you don't mind, I think it's probably best if I tape your mouth shut again. <laughs> Trust me, it's for your own protection. <laughs> So, uh, 
The expedition was not a success then. Well, I found it interesting, but Satan went into a real grump about it all. Where is he now? Well, I don't know. He flew off muttering something about firebombing river dance. <laughs> Oh, I see you've managed to write something, Thomas. Yeah, it's probably rubbish. Oh, let's hear it. I think it's very good. Oh, come on then, Thomas. <clears throat> it's called... Them. I know they are out there, lying in wait, their eyes gleaming bright with fury and hate. Their gaze is fixed on me, their prey, through the long sweat of night and the mad race of day. And I'm transfixed by the thought they're all the same, each predator's face identical to the other. And I know that man, I know who he is, for it is the accusing face of Alan Titchmarsh! <laughs> I mean, I mean, the ending still needs a bit of work. You know, you know. Yes. Uh, no, 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 well done. I it's, it's got energy. I can't quite get past the Alan Titchmarsh thing. <laughs> Don't know why? Well, that's the mystery of the creative process for you. I, I, I've written a poem as well, Professor. I'm really getting into this poetry lark. Oh, good. Who's, who's your favourite poem by? Oh, a man called Henry Francis Light. He wrote Abide With Me. Oh, what, the thing they sing at the cup finals before the parachuters land in the centre circle with purple smoke coming out of their ankles? Yes. <laughs> I think the cup final association is why I find it so moving. I remember singing it in a huge packed crowd at Wembley Stadium. And a man in a white coat, northern chap, he used to stand on a tower in the middle of the pitch and lead us in the community singing. And he used to call out each line as he got to it. And the whole crowd sang. A hundred thousand people jammed so tightly that if you got taken short, you had no choice but to pee down a rolled-up newspaper <laughs> and hope that no-one noticed their leg was soaked in urine. <sighs> ah, yes, all that's been lost now, yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> it's the young people I feel sorry for missing out on a unique experience like that. <laughs> I think it's the simplicity of the words I find so moving. Abide with me. Fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. Lord, with me abide. <laughs> when other helpers fail. When other helpers fail. And comforts flee. And comforts flee. Help of the helpless. Help of the helpless. Oh, abide with me. Oh, I didn't see you there. <laughs> yes, well, well, I was attracted by the sound because, funnily enough, hymns aren't something you hear very often in here. <laughs> and, uh, and it must be all ages since Songs of Praise paid us a visit. <laughs> now, listen, before you start picking on anyone, this was my fault. I started it. Oh, I don't doubt that. Yeah, relax, Professor. I'm in one of my sunny moods, yeah. I've just enjoyed a therapeutic little trip back to that film set. Sadly, the production seems to have run into a few problems. Yeah, the studio's had to sack the producer, the director and the writer. Well, I suppose you orchestrated that. No, that's just what happens on movies. But I might <laughs> possibly have had something to do with Leonardo DiCaprio's inconvenient bout of leprosy. Oh! <laughs> so all in all, I don't think that picture's going to... What's that you're holding, scum spawn? Well, well, it's nothing, my lord. No, it's a piece of paper with writing on it. Is it? Oh, yes. Uh, it was just a minus doodles. What is it? It's nothing. It's nothing at all. I... What is it? I command you to tell me. It's a poem. I don't like poems. Who wrote it? I wrote it. It was me. Yeah, that's right. It was him. Tear it up, Scumscum. Scum. Tear up my dreadful poem. In other words, Scumspawn wrote it. Yes, my lord. I... I'll tear it up. Read it. It's rubbish, my liege. I, I said read it. Very well, my prince. It's, um... It's called... My prince. <laughs> he stands like a colossus. He moves with imperial grace. His black wings crack the scorching air, the doom of sinners written on his face. But beneath the fury, there's beauty too. Two angels' eyes of deepish blue, staring 
bleakly into space. <laughs> That's wonderful, Scumspawn. It's sentimental garbage. <laughs> That's not an opinion, it's a royal proclamation. I hereby officially proclaim this poem to be garbage. Give it to me, Scumspawn. Yes, my lord. Yeah. There, now it's ex-garbage. Scumspawn, if I ever catch you writing another poem... Oh, I won't, your fantasticness. I, I wouldn't dream of offending you by writing another. That's the last thing I do. Yes, it would be. Now, I trust I've expressed myself without ambiguity. I've worked out why ambiguity... Bothers you, so? Really, how fascinating. Mm. Ambiguity contains an element of doubt. Now, as a scientist, I'm used to that. I mean, science is a form of applied doubt. But someone in your position can't countenance doubt. Without certainties, absolutes, I mean, your whole being is called into question. Do you know something, Prof? You've got a lot of gob on you. How should I be punished, my prince? Oh, I don't know. Just, 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 just get out of my sight. Of course, yes, out of your sight. What, what, all the way out of your yeah, sight? Yeah, yeah, yes, go on. Uh, consider me gone, oh, my go prince. Go on. You really mustn't blame him. I don't. I blame you two. Yeah, you, <laughs> you began this little poetry festival. Now then, gentlemen. I don't like that edge in his voice. I've heard it before. Well, I was just thinking, you two will probably miss old Scumspawn, and I wouldn't want you to get lonely, so I'll just conjure up two demons to keep you company. <laughs> there. there, you probably recognise them, Professor. Why, you even uh, Now, little... now, Prof, let's have no nasty nouns. Enjoy. <laughs> I've heard that laugh before as well. Oh, God. Mind you, these two are pretty tame-looking demons, aren't they? I mean, look at them. Nothing very frightening about them. Well, one of the most promising QCs in the country. You're terribly shy. <laughs> Why is it talking like that? You were editor of the Express, if I remember correctly. Stop that. Yes, one of seven in the last eight years. I said stop that. You must be curious about why I play such important... Somebody make them stop! <laughs> Old Harry's Game featured Andy Hamilton as Satan, James Grout as the Professor, Jimmy Mulville as Thomas and Robert Duncan as Scumspawn, with Felicity Montague, Philip Pope and Michael Fenton Stevens. The programme was written by Andy Hamilton and produced by Paul Mayhew Archer.